plan to do Harvard for us to MPA today, it's Sunday. And then I realised that I've got more church services than I can do something with some real faults on. So I'll see if we can do this Kerno Beach 1100, which one of our viewers, Tom, has sent in as a freebie. So it's obviously a tired set and the, the mains lead, the Powleys, uh, disappeared. Um, one of the advantages, these usually work very well. And you can see this has had quite a lot of use. So I want to do this. It's quicker to do an alignment on it because it doesn't have a meter. So that is why it got selected. So really, I've got to try and do this within 20 minutes. Oh, can't I get the lid off? So unlike the, the Midlands, which use the same kind of circuit, but this has better squelch arrangement, these are crystal filtered as standard. It's there. So is it 2781? It is 2781, but some of these can be PR2794. So they're that kind of era, they are about 1994. So I'll tell you what, we'll just see whether we've got enough there just to connect our power lead to because what I can do when I finish the video and between doing the on the air test this evening I'll be able to do the power lead but if I do the power lead now I won't have time for the on, for the uh, repair so there we are pretty short lead so it's an unknown so we'll t carefully power it up and I'm powered up at 9 volts. And these boot up on channel 9. So, let's try 13.8 volts. There we go. So it's on channel 9 switch. And both up and down work. They've got PA on these. So we'll get, put the PA speaker in there, and we'll put the test equipment speaker into there. Connect it to the test equipment aerial input. And get our standard replacement mic. So he says in his note here, Hello Richard, just a little donation to the channel. The radio worked a good few years ago when I was using it in the truck, but the internal speaker didn't work. I had to use an extension speaker with it. Right. So here we are on public address. Testing one, two, testing one, two. Testing one, two, testing one, two, testing one, two. Right, we'll get a sheet of paper and I'll get the alignment chart that I've already just printed off. So we've run out of blank forms. Right, so now armed with a piece of paper, jotted down the serial number, got a mic plugged in, switch it to CB, select channel 20. And we're going to transmit. I'm on the three watt scale. Put picture in picture on so we can both see it.
and we have to unplug something, don't we? So straight away it's doing bang on 3 watts. So on channel 20 it's 3 watts. Let's pop it onto another channel. Like 40. It's 3 watts. And put it on channel 1. It's 2.95. Normally, radios give more power on the lower channels. Now, does it have low power? It doesn't, does it? So, theoretically, under 2781 specification, which is MPT1320, it should have low power. But it seems to be in that changeover period where it doesn't. Right, let's look at the current. We'll go back to channel 20. And we'll see what current it's drawing to deliver 3 watts. It's 834 milliamps. Let's have a look at deviation. Wallo! Um, don't know if the test set's playing up or not. I've got a sheet here with the adjustments on I'll tell you what we're going to uh, no I'll do deviation later we'll do it later because the test set's only been on 10 minutes so VCO we're not going to do and frequency let's go over to the frequency counter and we'll get some kind of indication even though the test equipment is still warming up 27.79143 is a bit high and it's going to go higher so we may as well adjust that right now I'll just make a note that it was 27, 79143. And that is not a problem. It, it's just slightly high. It, it's within the rules and it wouldn't be noticeable. It really doesn't matter. I'm sure that one wants to go in there. Trust me to go the wrong way. <laughs> I think we'll leave it at there. So with that figure, we'll go into the signal generator and put the signal generator on 2779125. Go, and I have to plug the extension speaker back in. That capacitor needs changing. I can see it starting to be a bit on the raised side. We have to pop, pop the other lid off. See, I thought it would be a straightforward tune up, and it isn't. It's got a distinct bulge on that. It hasn't started popping its innards out, but definitely got a bulge. Annoyingly, the self-tapping screws on these sets. Oh, if we can get into it. possible this could affect audio. I think it's just there. If 
will be held by glue. Negative is to the my right. It's 470 at 16 volts. I'll put it down as just this little tiny bulge. Uh, where's the capacitors in this room? Okay, so we've uh, gone to go and get a Nikki Con one. So negative to the right. I mean, at the end of the day, these are coming up to be 30 years old now. So I'm going to test this just for the laugh. I'm going to test these have got to wrap around the microphones. So it's supposed to be 470 microphones. It's 417, it's dropped a little bit. Yeah, it, it, it's still okay, but it needed to go. Right, switch the set back on. I put it back on channel 20. And put it back on channel 20. Oh, here we go. This is going to be a pain, isn't it? And put it back on channel 20. Sounds awful. What a racket. Let's put the cyanide meter up. So for 12 dB, it's one microvolt. I think the sales and service data says better than one microvolt. But it doesn't sound right at all. 0 0.91. And for 20, if it does it over the racket, it does actually for three. Squelch to four, I'm going to put the signal generator to 100 microvolts. Put the squelch to four, not the volume. And the full squelch isn't that far out, and there's no hard and fast rule about this anyway. But it's 240 microvolts tight squelch and let's go down to threshold it's about one microvolt right so with the Let's start with transmit first, like we usually do. So we're going down these. We have a transmit power preset there. So first of all, we need to put the power to full. I'll go to the 30 watt scale. And we'll show the main meter on the inset picture. And we'll take the extension speaker back out. So it's just showing under 3 watts. So we'll pop the power up to full to do the tune-up. Now does 4.6 watts. And now we'll centralise the tuning. I don't want it to be doing this power for 
really very long, so I've got to be as quick as possible. Or it will kill the transmitter. So, it's not far out, the tuning at all. So we'll set that to 4 watts which is there. I, d I doubt I've made any difference. So we know we've now got 4 watts. Let's go to another channel. I don't tilt the setup or it's going to short out those tiny little wires. 4 watts on channel 40 and 4 watts on channel 1. I must have made a difference. Go back to channel 20. And the current consumption is now 989 milliamps. So another 150 milliamps to deliver another full one watt. I'm going to go over to the test set behind me to do the deviation. Just in case this one's playing up, which it sometimes does. And we're looking at that being the deviation preset. So I'll just pop this into the test set behind. We have shown this test bench a couple of times before when we were doing some Fidelity Thousands. We needed the sweep generator on this bench just before I started doing them with the Synad meter instead. Sweep generator is a long drawn out method as shown in the manual, but uh, it seems to be honest to be more accurate to do it with the sign admitter. Walla, walla. It's, it's really low. It really is about one and a half kilohertz, just like the Marconi set said. So let's move that up a bit if it will. Walla. That's now peaking at 2.5. Right, we'll plug it back into the mark only test set and see if it agrees or whether it's in a shant mood today. Wallow, wallow. No, it's not it's not agreeing today. So it's actually one point six. It's now 2.2 .2 to 2.5 kilohertz, so it's down a watt and really quiet. No meter, no meter, no lamp, switches work, and we don't know about the speaker, which he says is duff. So, receive, plug the extension speaker back in through the test equipment. There's 100 microvolts on the signal generator, and we'll look at the oscilloscope. So this is so awful, is the detector out? No, it isn't. It's spot on. That's just uh, not nice sounding. I'll go to the sign meter. Actually, it sounds better now. Let's go to about 4 dB. See if we can improve the receiver, which I think we should be able to. No improvement there. Tiny improvement there. No improvement really that I can see there. Let's put a bigger signal on.
Right, so we've really gone backwards and forwards on that. I'm going to recheck the detector. And we'll see if we've got any improvement. A very little difference there, so theoretically you'd think it's going to be pretty well the same. So my estimate is going to be, instead of one microvolt, probably something like 0 0.9. <laughs> that living hope. Here we go. Well, amazingly, it's made a massive difference. And we've now got 0 0.52. And 0.47 and 1 oh wow right whatever turn the squelch to full not the volume so I want 100 microvolts to come in That squash that lets down the Midland is it 095? But this squash is different. On, it's about the only thing that is different. Slightly different board layout, but it's different. And these don't seem to suffer from dry joints. So that's now doing 100 microvolts for full squash, which is what I want it to be. So let's go and see where it is at the other end. Signal generator back on. Let's show you the attenuator. So we're parked at 0.3 of a microvolt. I'll switch the attenuator, the thing back on. Let's come straight in. Yeah, that was a bit of a fluke. It's 0.7. Right, so in actual fact that works nicely. I'm not going to put the... I will just as a temporary measure. I've got the power lead to do. So what's, let's see if this is not working. We're going to ohms, check we've got continuity, we have, check it on the speaker, the speaker's actually working, Let's just use the crocodile clip leads. Unplug the test equipment speaker. I think what we've got is a dirty socket because I've plugged in with the extension speaker. I know he said he was doing. I'm just going to use the speaker on the wall instead of the test equipment one. Well, it's working for me. We'll see how it sounds when we actually hear some voices on it. But if not, our mystery benefactor Alan kindly sent a scrap 
illegal AM radio chassis with speaker there we go So I know I've got that power lead to do. Try not to get it to short out. So apart from that capacitor, I can't remember now whether I changed the capacitor before we initially tested the receiver. Let's go over to the signal generator. Take the signal generator off, put the squelch on. Go over to the roof aerial. Which I keep saying is a Antron 99, Solacon 99, something 99. And it's a single story building. And it's mounted a little bit higher than gutter level broadside into an apex roof which is concrete tiled so woods across the road but not in the nottingham direction which is why we can hear the nottingham burner brigade so the most frustrating thing about these it uses the phase that loop chip that always boots up on channel nine let's start off at channel nine as we flick through the channels on a sunday afternoon at one o'clock One nana, Roger. Right, well, we'll leave it on there, we'll, and I'll get this done uh, before we get the scratchy corner test done. So that has worked out nicely, thanks Tom. So I can see why with it only doing three watts and with it doing um, such low deviation, it would not work without some intervention, which is now had. Uh, capacitor would affect the receive audio, uh, which we've done. So I'll tick off the speaker. Didn't come with a mic. There we go. So that was relatively quick. Thanks for watching Kerno Beater 1100 from about 1993.